Hello and welcome to me redoing my Hoya wall. Again, for the third time, I think. Or fourth. Or who knows. Who's keeping count, right? The Hoya wall in question is no longer a Hoya wall. I mentioned this in the previous videos that I would like it to no longer be Hoya exclusive, but inclusive. Hoyas plus some other plants grow wall. And as I showed in one of my previous videos, we do have a giant Ripsalis there. We have some ferns. There is a staghorn fern and the no ID fern, which you cannot see because of this monstera that needed to be potted months ago. And that fern actually grew, so I am slightly shocked. Some leaves did brown, but all of this is new. And you can see some of the leaves do have a bit of brown, but overall, I'd say we're doing well. It has not been underwatered, not once. I think the reason these leaves did brown is because essentially this fern would like to be slightly cooler, but you know, it's around 20 degrees inside. What are you gonna do? People do need to live here too with the plants and the staghorn fern. I don't remember how big this was when I got it. I think similar size. I don't know if this actually grew. It's doing really, really well as well. They both need to be repotted, but to be quite honest with you, I'm not 100% sure what potting mix to put them in. I think they do prefer to be in a PD mix. There is only one Hoya here. This is Hoya ponderata from Vietnam, which probably needs to be watered a little bit. And she's gonna stay on this wall. She's a giant plant. <laughs> it's quite big, actually. <laughs> and then we have one Talancia and the <laughs> very inappropriate Nepenthes up there. What was first the issue with my grow wall? There weren't many issues. It did really well. Plants did really well there, but it is quite big. Towards the lower level here, the plants don't get too much light and the ones on the top sometimes get too much. So the ones on the top are not growing because they're getting a lot of light and the ones on the bottom are not growing because they're not getting enough. So that's been a challenge and I have tried a lot of the Hoyas on the wall. I liked how some of them grew, but not all of them, to be quite honest with you. Some of them looked just okay. The plants that I shockingly loved on the wall are Hoya Pantoratas. Not just that one, that one is gorgeous, but some of the ones that I have here, I'm saying shockingly I liked these ones because they kind of grow very, very strangely. Let me get some of them out for you. I don't know where to put this. I completely forgot about this box of plants. So those are also going on the wall. They're gonna go back. What I have found is that plants that maybe don't fall so graciously, like this Hoya Bella, you know, they kind of are slightly bushy-ish. They tend to look really good on the wall. That includes Hoya Polinera. There is a plant I want to show you, and you will know that I complained about this plant in the past. It is my Hoya Pandorata. And as you can see, this is just a whole lot of mess, right? This plant, if you have it, you know what I'm talking about. It's just the growth pattern is all over the place. However, once it's mixed in the wall with other plants, it kind of looks nice. Initial plan was to get ferns, to fill out the space with ferns, to put these Hoyas that are like this Pandorata towards the bottom because then they sort of cover this and you can't see the end of the wall. So it kind of, you know, it looks very nice. And then to fill out the space with ferns here on the bottom, but I could not really find any ferns that I liked. I only found two ferns. I have been on the lookout for ferns, but there are no ferns when I meet. When I need ferns, there are no ferns. They hid all the ferns away from me. So I decided to look into epiphytic cacti because I love them a lot as well. And I got one. 
My friend gifted me another, I think two pots. I think we can put this one into two pots. I would like to keep it as is, just so I don't have to do anything, but I think it's just a bit too large. I also forgot to show you what pots I will be using. So we've got pots for this. I don't like these, but we'll talk about it. These are 12 centimeter, I believe. And they do have a detachable tray, which I appreciate. I cannot detach it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> don't embarrass me in front of the camera. So they have a detachable tray. The side is completely flat, which once again, we appreciate. And then a hook can be put here. I do have one. My staghorn fern was staying in it. And so, so on the stability, I think we can maybe improve the DIY hook a little bit. I'm going to start first with this big pandurata that I showed you. And I'm not going to repot every single plant with some, with a speech about it. That would be an endless video, but you know, I think couple we can show. Okay, so this does not have such bad roots as I thought. I actually expected most of them to be dead, but they're not. This has been underwatered million and one times. It's not terrible. They could be in better shape, yes, but I feel that's just rude to say, like you could be in better shape, how dare you? You have not been in my shoes, right? So I'm not gonna tell that to her, but I'm going to gently remove some of these roots that are, you know, coming off by themselves. I thought I was gonna have to restart it and I wasn't looking forward to that because I don't want to have a million Pandoratas, but hey, it seems we may not need to. Hopefully the luck will follow us throughout the rest of these repottings, and that will be the case with most of these. I actually do find Pandorata to be quite resilient. Even the, the splash one, I don't know, it just grows really well for me. They always grow really well for me. This one does not bloom so much, but you know, it's a good grower. And I will put it in a smaller pot. If the roots were healthy, if all of them were healthy, we would be upsizing, but in this case, they're not all super healthy, you know, we're working with slightly smaller root ball, perhaps. So I'm going to put her in the smaller pot. As for the mix, I'm not going to lie. I have no idea. I'm going to mix in a lot of stuff here. <laughs> I don't know how Coco Husk will play with other stuff, but let's try it in a mix. I think I did try it in a mix with some of the plants and I didn't love it, but you know, we'll see. So I'm just gonna put some coco husk here. Is this the part of the video where I discover that I have no coco peat? I do have something here. I'm just gonna use that. This is no ID mix. It seems that it's a leftover from some of my repottings. It looks it will be good for the Hoya, so let's just, let's just go all in with, with this mix that I am not familiar with. Looks nice and chunky. So let's do this pandurata. And I would like her to fall over a bit. She was kind of falling like that. So I'm gonna maybe not try super hard to plant her upright. I do think I might, in a moment, melt this pot to just anchor this, because she's quite top heavy. Maybe I do want to anchor her. We'll see how she sits in the pot. I've never done that, but I think we might need to, because, you know, these roots are not grown into this mix. So we might need to actually anchor. Yep. That is absolutely falling out. Okay, let's try to pot her deeper, but that's the issue with these mixes that are very light. And especially now that I have cleaned off the roots, they fall out easily. Let's just try to push that in a little bit. I don't know, is, is it safe? But essentially what I would do, and maybe I still will, we'll see, just put two holes here. 
on the back and just hoop a bit of a wire and help her stay in place. I might do that after I water her. Okay, I feel that we need more plants. So we have a Polynera that I cut off two branches from her. She's not looking the sexiest. The reason for that is because I burned those with oil treatment. I think I'm gonna do Burmanica first. And I just don't see that we're gonna be able to save these roots, but we're gonna try. Well, I think we found some root mealybugs. When I say think, I'm like 100% sure. And that is not very good at all. Well, this changes a lot of things, doesn't it? This is not great for several reasons. This is not a small plant, as you can see. It's interesting that she's so succulent still. So do I treat them? The roots are not in great shape. Or do I restart her? You can absolutely see. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to show you because now I have this other plant. I am infested at this point. The other one didn't have any, but that's not mold. Mm -mm. That ain't mold. A lot of the roots are damaged too. Yeah, one of them is moving on the bottom. You can see there. Nope, you cannot see the bottom. Some of them are moving there on the bottom. So those are definitely root mealybugs. Okay, change of plans. I think I'm gonna clean up the roots. I do have sous vide. I think I'm gonna soak them in sous vide and pot them back and see how that treatment works. I already made a video on this topic, so I will not go too deep into the treatment in this video. Instead, you can follow the link above and you can go watch the video that I made, I think three weeks ago on root mealybugs. How lovely that we mention them so frequently on the channel. All right, so that was not a pleasant discovery. I did not find anything on this Pandorata, so I'm hoping she is fine. Burmanica just got a warm water treatment, 48 degrees for 10 minutes. That is 48 degrees of Celsius. And then I soaked her in cooler water for about five minutes. And then I gave her a shower and kind of gently brushed the roots with an old toothbrush because there were still some mealies, probably dead, but just to get their nasty bodies off of there. Now we have two more Hoyas to go through here and hopefully I do not find any more mealybugs. They were in the same box and for about a week, hopefully nothing transferred. I made a bit of a boo-boo here. I kept referring to this plant as Hoya pandorata. It is clearly Hoya polinera. And then when I finish with those, I'm going to stop for today with recording, but I am going to repot the Bellas as well. Let's just hope everything is fine here. I did wash my hands several times. I did use gloves when I handled that plant. Okay, I don't see anything here. I do see a bunch of perlite. Yeah, I think this one is fine. Some damaged roots, but I don't see as of yet any mealybugs. That doesn't mean that there aren't any eggs. That absolutely doesn't mean there is something that we don't see. But for now, she seems to be doing okay. The root system is not in the best condition because of underwatering, which is amazing. There is some dry rot on this one. Hoya polinera typically roots very easy. Pretty extensive, this dry rot too, so. Yeah, I just think I'm going to restart it. So we have these two cuttings and, you know, let's have one nasty one. So we're going to restart that, which is not what I was hoping for, but here we are. Let's hope this one has more luck. No, 
This one does not have more luck. This one also has root mealybugs. I see them on the bottom. They're moving. So, that's trash. I guess that's con that concludes this. Um, <laughs> okay, well, not exactly what I was hoping for. We are going to conclude this right now. I'm going to look at my Bellas, and first I'm gonna wash my hands, dump this, because I don't want, as I put the old soil here, I don't want any splash from the mealies, but this is the most unfortunate thing. Welcome to the second day of Let's Build a Plant Wall. Clearly someone did not get the memo because this is turned into Let's Find Root Mealybugs. I did, as you know, find root mealybugs on a couple of my Hoyas. When I say couple, I mean five or six out of, I don't know how many, <laughs> but that's just a development that we did not anticipate that we didn't wish for no one i don't know who manifested was it you did you manifest that anyways we have hoyas here that i did repot on my own and i showed you i also broke the pot of this one so that's nice this is my mirabilis this is going to go on the wall she's still looking okay this one has been treated in the warm water still looking good and then we have who do we have we have my true hoya bortonia and this is confirmed a true one it hasn't bloomed but i got the help of an expert it's confirmed to be the true hoya bortonia we do have a peduncle here it has slowed down with the growth because honestly in the past several months it's been exposed to not such great light so we have slowed down with the growth. The plant is not silver. The camera is perhaps making it look silver and it's not dehydrated either. It is filled with, <laughs> it's filled with calcium from the tap water. I tried to wash it away with RO water yesterday, but it didn't really help. It's um, very nice, soft and fuzzy. Uh, it's fuzzier than the regular Bortonia. This one did not have root mealybugs. But I'm going to expose her to higher light in the wall and hope for more growth and for it to finally bloom. I did repot my Hoya Amicabilis. Why is it crooked? I wanted... Never mind. My Hoya Amicabilis, I told you these types of Hoyas I think really look well on the wall. It does have flowers hiding here. Absolutely adorable. I will love it on the wall. These are going to go towards the bottom. Everything that is kind of bushy like this will go towards the bottom and then something else towards the top. But it also doesn't want a tremendous amount of light in my experience. It did burn it in the tent and it wasn't even that close to the light, like so dramatic. <laughs> but I transitioned this from pawn. Hopefully it doesn't croak. We can restart it still, and I will watch these very carefully because I cup, transitioned a couple of more from Pawn, and this time I shan't be allowing any nasty situations to continue happening. So if I see that this one is kind of losing the firmness in the leaves, which, you know, they are thin but still firm, if that makes sense, we will reroute it. But hopefully that's not going to be necessary. And then... My Hoya Burmanica is going to go towards the bottom as well. Honestly, she's still firm for Hoya Burmanica. No leaf drop yet. So I am really hoping that she will be fine. I'm really hoping that she took the treatment well. We will see how she fares. I am sure that at one point she will be slightly dehydrated. I'm sure there will be some repercussion for the for the things that I did because as I told you, she doesn't have a lot of roots on her. But yeah, we shall see. We shall see how that goes. And then we have Lacunosa mixes, two Lacunosa mixes. Durian Perangin Waterfall. Actually, I got this as uh, Lankavi Island. My Durian Perangin Waterfall, which I believe are the same. That one is dehydrated, needs to be restarted lost roots in pawn, etc. And then, um, oh gosh, who are you? Royal Flush. These were inorganic mix. So those two are gonna go on the wall and I think this is gonna look super cute. 
We have a couple of more. One of these is a cross and I believe this is L. I'm not really sure. I'll have to look on my list. Then this is EPC with an accession number. I, again, don't know the accession number by heart. I'm sorry. I will write the names for these two. So, editing Miro. This is Hoya Lacunosa, EPC. Insert the number. Very pretty. And this is a cross that is called... Insert the name, Miro. Insert the name, because... I'm, I don't know where the, where the label is, but I have exactly in my deranged list. I have a deranged list. I have a deranged list of Hoyas that I own. And before I move this, I moved it, so I have to update the list now. But I have a list of all the Hoyas, alphabetically, where I got them from, when, or who I got them from. And then on the second sheet, I have another list, and that list is Millsbo, Rudsta 1, Rudsta 2, Wall, Hanging Hoyas, Tent one, two, three, and what Hoyas are where, so I know. It is deranged. That is why I said I have a deranged list. And I think I will add these Hoya lobbies on the bottom too. I don't know if these are the same color of the flower, but I will just pot them together. I mean, nasty Hoya lobby leaves as always. This one looks slightly better. These are from my burnt plant. I burned it with oil treatment. Thank you very much. It lost all of the leaves. I managed to save two cuttings. And I did have three plants. One I know that I killed by underwatering. That is the Hoya with dark, Hoya Lobby with dark flower. And then another one, I don't really remember what happened to that one. Might be one of these two. I don't know. I'm going to grab my big Ripsalis now and show you the plant. First of all, just know that I'm very tall. Second, this is very big. I don't think anyone is thinking this is small, but this is quite a large plant. It's, uh, honestly takes up all the space here from my Ateba points to my shelf. It's huge. I don't know what, what, what do I compare it to? Like it would take up an entire Rudsta cabinet, if you can see. Anyways, I'm going to try to do something with it in the most gentle way as possible. And, I don't know how I'm approaching this. With my camera there slightly adjusted, let's attempt to do something with this. Well, first of all, this is not a tutorial. I'm going to do the easiest, which is to remove this. And then we just, I can't even remove the hanger. This is crazy. I'm going to try not to break anything. I don't need million propagations of this plant. And I did strictly get this for the wall because no one has ferns that I want. This is actually proving very difficult to remove. What the heck? I can't even access that from the foliage. Oh, okay. That sounded like something breaking. Yep, something did break. Something slightly got damaged. Let's try to not do that. Let's maybe if I approach it from different... Okay, so if that was that hard, I don't imagine that the rest of the task gets any easier. Let's just try to release it from the pot. I can't even tell you how many plants are in here, but I do hope there is at least two or three. Let's first inspect for any pests. I don't see any pests. I do see some calcium buildup or, you know, some nasty stuff. It's not mealybugs. Um, okay, so... Yeah. Um, <laughs> please help. I think it would be easiest to remove this by just slicing through the root ball, which you can do. It is a valid division method. What I'm going to try to do is probably not the smartest. I'm going to try to untangle the plants and that's a bit difficult because this is root bound. We'll just massage the root ball. Um, you know, I didn't think this was going to be easy, 
but I did think it is going to be slightly easier than what it is currently proving to be. As I can tell you, I, I don't think I've made any progress so far. And I'm trying to move it as little as I can um, because, you know, I just don't really want any more. I already have a propagation from this one that sort of broke off. Now, these plants can take a lot, so I'm just trying to pull them apart a little bit to loosen that up. I think I'm gonna do this one first because this one overlaps. So I'm trying to look how the plant grew. So I'm going to try to remove this section. There we go. Then this part, okay, I think I can go from this side now. This part is free but the branch goes under so it is this branch and then it goes under here you know what miro good luck arranging this again into a couple of pots i'll see how many i think i will be fine if i get three pots out of it and sort of kind of disperse it across the wall oops we did again break the tip of that it's inevitable okay that's not, that one actually looks very nice. I like that. So I'm going to put it here. We are getting closer. Now I, th I think it's going to be easy. Those were the difficult parts. So we have two here. We can decide later how to break those apart. That's another one. And then, oh gosh, okay, this. Okay, so let's see. I don't know what to do now. I have it all over the room. So I'm going to clean up the roots a little bit more from this mix, just so there is not a lot of peat. And then we can see which one I like the best or what combinations. I can make for the wall. I do wish instead of, instead of one Ripsalis that is divided into, you know, several, that I actually had several different Ripsalises, but they're just not super available. I'm just now going for a full wall um, more than anything else. And then, you know, maybe if I do come across something else, I can switch them out. And obviously I would like to keep part of this one, um, but if the opportunity arises for me to get some other ones, I would switch out some of these to accommodate different species. I really love Ripsalis. Um, I don't love cacti at all. I just don't. <laughs> but I adore epiphytic cacti. They are amazing. And I don't care if you don't get it. Uh, anyways, back to the mix. I think I'm just going to use pure cocoa husk because... Honestly, the components are pretty far away from me, like perlite, etc., which I don't think you need, but um, I mean, I don't think you need to add perlite if you're just gonna use cocoa husk, but if you're adding cocoa peat, it would be nice. Okay, I uh, really have to start potting some of these. I can't keep messing about. In case I need some, I'm gonna leave three for other Hoyas if I need to use them. So we'll make one big one or bigger one and then some smaller ones. So let me put some cocoa husk there. I think I decided this one is the biggest. And we can definitely put a couple of more there. I'm sort of looking something to fill in like in the center. Yeah, I think these will come in handy there. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Maybe under. I also, I'm gonna tell you, arranging in the pot is not my strongest. Let's just set that 
aside-ish. I'm gonna try to do another pot just to see, just so we can distribute them. Where are the pots? The pots have gone for me. What? The... What? Okay, here they are. Okay, let's do this. Um, I think these two can be the base. And then we can put this one. Come on, fit in. You're an epiphyte. Don't tell me you need space in the pot. That's actually kind of looking full here. And I think we can make a third pot. Well, this is a really giving plant. It's a really giving plant. I have, what have I done? What am I doing? Who am I? Let's add cocoa peat, cocoa husk, sorry. And then this. They all literally look huge. So, I'm not really sure what I'm doing here. Also, please just be kind next time when I complain that I don't have space. <laughs> don't, I don't want anyone to send me the link to this video if I next time complain I don't have any space. Like. My issue here, just one concern, will these be even stable in the pots, is my question. Okay, so these are going to take a significant portion in the wall, which I'm, I'm happy about. I don't, the goal here is that we do not want any of that mesh to be really visible. And we are definitely going to achieve that. That's for sure, no one is questioning that. Will they all fit? They will all fit. I'm sure they will all fit the plants. They will be really intertwined. I'm really going for a bushy look, but my concern here is, is everyone gonna get enough light? So I guess we will see that pretty soon. I am wondering if I could put this in a smaller pot and I think I can. I think I can. And then I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with the big pot, but let's just, you know, see if I can. If I can fit them in. Yeah, they fit. They don't need, I think, a lot of space in the pot. I have definitely done something. Have I done a good job? I don't know. But I've definitely done something here. So it's a mess. We have some leftovers here and I do actually have a couple of more bigger ones. Um, I have one more there that is propagating in water. So we will make another pot for someone to gift to and probably eventually one of these is going to get gifted as I, you know, get more Ripsalis, which is definitely not the plan. <laughs> Why am I acting like that's the plan? That's not the plan. <laughs> it's fine. I'm not gonna get any more plants. Oh, this is so nasty. Welcome to poorly lit part of the video. It's just something that you will have to get used to. Cameras are stupid and they don't know how to, I, or I'm stupid, I don't know how to light this properly. This is too bright, whatever. So. The backlit experience aside, here is how far I have come with the Hoya wall. As you can see, we have some Hoyas already on the wall. We have the trusty Pandurata from Vietnam on the wall. She's melting into the... melting in, that's not a great... blending in. She's blending in. We have the Bromelia here. I believe that is how I'm going to place her. She will need to be watered pretty soon here. And then we have the Ripsalis. This is not their final placement, but one, two, and three. The Nepenthes is up there. Some of these traps are leaving us, which is normal. I have read that in most cases, when you get a Nepenthes, they just can be a bit dramatic in the beginning and they will lose the traps. And then, you know, when you get the new traps in your home, those will stay. Something is sticky here and I do not like that. 
But anyways, we have another fern, another pandurata here. And now we're going to place the rest of the plants. I have six pots here with Hoyas that need to find a home in the wall. And then after that, if there is some space left, we will add, I have three more Hoyas that I can put in there. Yeah, I think I'm satisfied with that. So I'm going to add a couple of more things and then show you the final look. So I don't think we need to put more Hoyas. So I'll find some different spot for those, perhaps hanging um, someplace else. But this is looking kind of cute. I kind of love it. I would like to take some time to thank all of my patrons for their incredible support. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons. My three anonymous patrons, Alex von Siebenthal, Amber Clear, Amber Kosher, Anne Margaret Moen, Angela Bernard, Angela Parrish, and C. Aspen Drake, Patsy Bougie Panda, Brad Noble, Kathleen Molina, Candy Tap, Colleen Coyle, Levi, Daniela Danuk Daniels, Daria Kaminska, Dili Heredia, Deanne Sikorsky, Dipanjali Rao, Edith W., Erin Keenan, Ellen Saxon, Farah Gathering Moss, Gina Geise, Go Green Tropical, Heather Uppenkamp, 
Georgie Scott, Hoya Heather, Jamie Arsenault, Yana Griffin, Jessica Chia, Yavan Dunant, Kara, Catherine B, Casey Gross, Kelly Cool, Kelly Gallagher, Kelso, Kimberly Polka, Kiwi Mochi, Christy Ehrlich, Leplan de Steph, Lisa Marie, MPLS, Lori J. Revert, Mandy Milliken, Marcel Harmer, Celia Novosansky, Maria Stein, Marina Yarmulik, Maria West, Maris B, Marty Miller, Mary Rose, Melissa Walker, Michael Curley, Michelle Heron, Nicole Ferranti, Mirka Grun Bruce, Moa Edmund, Neil Yang, Niha Basu, Nicole Maroni, Nina Nguyen, Nita Macy, PJ Plan the Druid, Rachel Peterson, Robin L. Jennings, Sandra Cornelius, Sherry Kumar, Stephanie H2O, Tessa Martins, Tia B, TJWO, Trista Bailey, Tristan Thomas, Wendy, Wendy Foreman, Wendy Rossman, Xenia Green, Yuta the Wallamut, Zaira Rivera, Zerdarama, and Zlokov Nippon. A big thank you to my $3 patrons Angelina Farman, Kelon Constance, Daryl Dar Rosario, Eden C, Catherine Parsons, Lindsay Ann, Lisa Helling, Ella Lindbergh, Nella, Nerdy Cathy, Sykes, Sarah, Ringlove, and Tan Watanas. Very cool. And a thank you to my $1 patrons one anonymous patron, Alice Borland, Brenda Pacheco, Christina Greengrass, Colleen Coyle Levi, Couture Helvetica, Amelia Bronson, Joanna Pearson, Jolie Sullivan, Jonas Barr, Hjort Larson, Kayla Vavra, Kelly Ash, Chris Perez, Lauren M., Lori Ann Subramanian, Elizabeth Fernandez, Millie Spicer, Olivia Chen Muller, and Tracy the Eye Miller.